Next video. Stupidly expensive things Jeff Bezos owns. Jeff Bezos owns some of the craziest things I've ever seen, like the world's biggest clock and extremely rare secrets from the bottom of the ocean. These are stupidly expensive things Jeff Bezos owns. And first up, Jeff bought a dog that can literally do his laundry. This robot dog named Spot can do a lot more than just- I feel like if I had Jeff Bezos money, I wouldn't know what to can do with it. If you, it, it, people always say, oh, if I win the lottery, I'm going to do this, this, and this, right? But when you win the lottery, you're going to get anywhere between like a hundred and five hundred million dollars. He has like, I mean, it's in assets, but also liquid cash. He, he has multiple billions, multiples of billions. I don't know if that's the right terminology. Tens of billions, hundreds of billions of dollars. You can buy anything. Like, he could go into a Walmart and just say, I'm going to buy everything in this fucking Walmart right now. And it would be one point, or point oh, 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 one percent of what he has. Even less, right? He could just go somewhere and just be like, I want to buy the whole store. I'm going to own this Walmart, right? Walk over to a whole dealership. I'm going to buy every car in this dealership. Thank you. That's why they always start collecting weird shit, like fucking swords. And, like, medieval stuff. I feel like every billionaire just starts owning historical artifacts and, like, dinosaur skeletons. Because what else are you going to fucking do? Like, when Jeff needs a beer, all he needs to do is put his cup down and let Spot take a piss. But in case that grosses you out, Spot can just go to the store and grab some snacks instead. And after Jeff's done eating, it'll clean up after him. Hell, it could even be his- He owns way cooler shit. This is, like, 40 grand. Jeff probably owns a fucking nuclear bomb. Bodyguard, and even though this dog cost Bezos 75k, it still ain't perfect. So if Bezos is trying to keep himself protected, he can't just rely on his dog. Because there are powerful people out there trying to murder him. Which is why he has the most ex- Doesn't he have a missile defense? Don't all billionaires have like missile defense systems on their yachts? Like GTA, dude. Like that's a billionaire yacht. If you were to go steal or, or kill Jeff Bezos- it would probably be easiest to do in the middle of the ocean. So that's where they have, like, all that shit geared up. Bro, bro probably has, like, a safe room with, with fucking AKs just sitting there with guards. Expensive private security in the world. Because when a journalist was killed in Saudi Arabia, Bezos blamed the assassination on a Saudi prince. And their government didn't take that lightly. Allegedly threatening Bezos and hacking his phone to blackmail him about his secret affair. So not only did Bezos install military grade The Saudi government hacked Jeff Bezos bulletproof glass into his office, he hired nine bodyguards to follow him around everywhere. And that ain't cheap. Coming up to 1.6 million a year just to keep Amazon's golden boy safe. But Yo, straight up, I'd buy like a full Iron Man suit. I would just walk around in that. I'd buy bodyguards, but if I'm Jeff Bezos, I'm going to try some Iron Man implementation type stuff. Like, I'm going to be like, build me a suit that could just tank a, a fucking rocket launcher. Make something to where if I get shot, I just don't even feel it. Still not as much as the millions he spent recovering a lost relic yeah, like a from mech suit. the depths of the ocean. Titanfall-esque shit. No, it's not another submarine. It's actually something that fell out of the sky. Because if you didn't know, Bezos is a huge space fan. When he was a kid, he was inspired by the Apollo missions to the moon. So he was willing to pay anything to get his hands on a piece of that history. And it turns- They've like never been anywhere. Like all the billionaires, I was listening to a podcast with Neil deGrasse Tyson and all the billionaires, who's the, who's the one white guy that looks like he has a lot of plastic surgery, not Jeff Bezos, Jeff Bezos. And then he owns like a, he's like blonde, pretty attractive, older guy, Richard Branson. Richard Branson, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, like all of them have been, if this is Earth, like here in rotation. Whereas the moon's like here, if you wanted to do it in comparison. Like they haven't been anywhere to where, they, like they've wrote, yeah, they've been in orbit or something, but they haven't really gone in space. The people that have gone in space are people that were that go, went to the moon. Like you see a fraction of space, whereas the people that are fucking that have been to the moon, like they've seen Earth in the same way that we've seen the moon. Like just imagine standing on fucking on the moon and looking at Earth. Like that would be the crazy, and and everything else is like a weird void.
Like, every human that has ever lived and every being that we know of is on this little-ass ball. Yo, imagine the feeling that you would have. Like, fucking standing on, on the moon, listening to, like, some interstellar music. In the deepest parts of the Pacific Ocean, there are pieces of the rocket engine that put Switch up the blue dot picture. I think I saw that. Uh, where, where the uh, satellite turned around. Blue dot photo. Yeah, and we're just the little, the little fucking pale dot. This is from a satellite we sent out, and that's Earth. From, like, a shitty 140p image, but... Uh, like, it's trippy to think about the fact that we are fucking so small. Like, it seems, everything just seems so, well, like, everyday life just seems so normal, right? And, like, you're kind of the center of the universe. Now think on the fact that, like, there are 8 billion people in the world, and each of them has, have a, has a life as complex as your own. And then think, that's only on one planet in one solar system, in one galaxy, over the span of, like, humans living in, like, fucking, what, 100,000 years? Like, it's insane. It's fucking freaky. Bezos hired a crew to dig out the remains, and it cost millions to restore. Just one of these engines costs around $15 million, but we'll never know how much Jeff spent on his little expedition, because he wanted to keep it a secret, and he's not even keeping the engine for himself. He actually donated it to a museum for the world to see. Maybe Bezos isn't such an evil guy. <laughs> okay, never mind. But when you're worth 165 billion, you gotta buy something nice for yourself. Like a stupidly expensive car collection. And you're oh my god. Dude, like it I feel like it it's too much money. I, I, when you own this many cars, it's like Hot Wheels, bro. You, it's like you're a kid playing with fucking Hot Wheels cars. It's like, oh, yeah, that's my Lamborghini. Yeah, that's my Lamborghini. Oh, no, this one's the Bugatti. Yeah, this is from 1930. This is a cool vintage car. It's, it's like you don't even care anymore. Like, if you owned, like, four of them, you could be like, all right. But he probably owns, like, a hundred cars. Collection. And you already know he's got your standard rich guy cars. Like a stretch limo, Escalade, and Range Rover. A but stretch when limo's only 50 grand? He earned his first $10 billion back in the year 2000. He bought something you'd never believe. He bought a 1997 Honda Accord? No, for real. Dude was literally worth billions and decided to drop 10000 on a Honda. But that broke boy mentality didn't last long, because he leveled up and bought a $3 million Ferrari Pininfarina Sergio. <laughs> I don't, I would be so scared to drive that car. I'm not if I'm him, but like if you're just a, say you're a casual multimillionaire, right? And you have $15 million to your name and you buy a $3 million car. Like if you crash that, oh, not even if you crash it, say some fucking broke ass college student rear ends you that's awful now imagine being the broke college student dude there, and, and again there's people that have done that there's broke like college kids that have like fucking rear-ended a bugatti you have insurance yeah but your insurance is gonna skyrocket you fucking you nail a fucking two million dollar car there are only six of these made in the world like that suck still the cheapest supercar he owns because he also bought a one of seven w motors like in hypersport and it's the only car in the world that has doors like this but every billionaire needs this next car because it's a classic flex and if you asked him what color is your guy bezos would say oreo because he bought a black and white bugatti veyron you know i always have like had these as my dream car like i would love to own like a fucking lambo like a huracan you can't drive them like, you can't, where are you going to go fast? On a highway? And then you go 100 miles, you go you go 10 miles over the speed limit, a cop's pulling you over. You would have to go on a track. Yeah, or a private road. You have to. You would have to pay to go on a fucking, but if you're that rich, I mean, it's probably not that big of a deal. But you'd have to pay to go fast on this thing. And it's by far the fastest car in his collection, reaching 0 to 60 in 2.5 seconds. So it makes sense why he copped it for 3.5 million. But he spent even more than that on a diamond-studded car. Jeff's I'm fucking whacking that bitch with a hammer and running. This is the easiest thing to steal from. Oh my god. Yo, you're telling me you're not gonna run up to that thing with a sledgehammer and just chunk a piece off and run? That's fucking, what's the point of this? Than that, on a diamond studded car, Jeff's Koenigsegg CCXR Trevita is covered in a million small white diamonds wow. held together with a carbon fiber. You can't even see them! 
Nah, the other one looked better. This just looks like carbon fiber. This is covered in diamonds. Weave. And being one of three. It just looks like a car. That Bezos back 4.8 mil. But oh his last God. and most expensive car is a Lamborghini Veneno Roadster. This special edition Lambo was made for the 50th anniversary of the company. Yo, that's the that's the Zentorno from GTA. I own that car. I own that car. So it cost him $10 million, making his total collection around 20 mil. Obviously, a billionaire is going to have a bunch of supercars. $10 million. It's only like 750k in GTA. Jeff, you got scammed, buddy. But Bezos ain't your average billionaire. Because I bet you didn't know, men spent $42 million on a clock. You think that... All right, hold up. I'm going to I'm going to say what I want to say and I'm going to rewind and I'm going to act flabbergasted again. You think that in the new GTA they're going to have cars that go like the actual speed that they go in real life? Cuz in regular GTA every car can only go like 130 like max. I think like the fastest in GTA might be like 140. I don't know if they're going to go like the speeds they go in real life because then there's going to be cars that they're going to be releasing that are going like 220, but I think there'll be cars that'll go like 200. I think they'll have really fast cars. Men spent 42 million on a clock. Th Gotta act flabbergasted again. This thing is 500 feet tall. 42 mil for a fucking clock. For what? Is this supposed to be like a better clock than anything else? Or is this for something in his business? So imagine a clock literally bigger than the Pyramid of Giza built into a Texas mountainside. And since Bezos is focused on the future. I hope he goes over his bunker, dude. Every billionaire is making a fucking bunker which is like scaring me. Why? Why are they Oh, they have like these weird they have these weird eight fucking underground floors in like an island in Hawaii that they just they built for like 200 million dollars. Why not? Dude, but they're all doing it at the same time. Instead of showing seconds and minutes, this clock shows years and centuries. So it'll tick once every year and chime every 100 years. There's also five secret rooms like in a pyramid Okay, that's kind of cool, but you're going to be dead. Is that the point? It's supposed to be like something that outlives him. Set to open up across a 10,000 year period. That's if we don't blow up the planet before then. But billionaires don't got to worry you about- You know the coolest business? Aged wines and aged whiskeys. Because if you're in a family that owns like an aged whiskey business, you're, you're like grandpa barreled whiskey and it won't be opened until, like, you're his age. Like, a hundred years aged whiskey. About that. Because Jeff can just fly away in his private jet. And you already know he can't just own one jet. He needs multiple. When he first became a billionaire, he bought a Falcon 900EX. But it was still too boring for him. So he gold-plated the bathrooms and threw a king-size bed in there, costing him 13 million. That was when he was only worth a couple build up. So in 2015, when he leveled up to 70 billion, he had to get rid of that peasant plane and buy a better one. He decided to go with the Gulfstream G650 ER because it's basically a flying house. It's got multiple bedrooms, bathrooms. Oh my God, yo, that's so sick. Everybody shits on, uh, everybody shits on billionaires for owning private jets and stuff. But like, chat, keep it real. You're a billionaire. You gonna be flying around in a private jet? Yeah, I'm not gonna be doing that bullshit where they fly like 30 minute flights. That's cringe. But if I was a billionaire, yeah, I'd loan up. I I I'd get a fucking 20 seat private jet and bring 20 people on it and fly to the fucking uh Barbados or some shit. I'd go somewhere cool. I'd also buy a big ass sailboat, make me feel like I'm a pirate. And then I'm also not using gas. I wouldn't learn how to use it, though. I would pay somebody. I would 100% pay somebody. I'm not learning how to use a fucking sailboat. I'm going to say, man, the flags. And then I'm just going to have one of those comically large wheels. The tides are getting stronger. Fucking, I just, it, but it wouldn't do anything. It would just be like a wheel with like nothing connected to it. And that's why it cost him $75 million. But he wasn't wow. happy with just one. So he copped the exact same one again, why? making his total private- Why? Why? See, that's what I don't get. I remember we watched some video about, I think it was, who, it wasn't, it wasn't Johnny Depp. National Treasure, name the actor. I can't think of him. I, I'm picturing his face right now and I blank on his name. Nick Cage, Nicolas Cage. 
He owned like fucking seven uh, Rolls Royces or some shit. I'm like, dude, why? And they're, they were the identical, they were the same car. Like, I'd maybe get you owning like a Rolls Royce in one country and then the same Rolls Royce in another country. But why have two of the same private jet? When are you using both? The jet fleet worth 150 million. And since Jeff contributes to half the world's pollution with those, he gets a lot of hate. So he wanted to buy something that could control people's minds. And what better way to do that than to buy the news? But Bezos had his eyes on the Washington Post, the number one news source for Washington, D.C. Yo, that is wild, though, that billionaires can own news, like news platforms. It's kind of hard to have a news platform that isn't biased because somebody's going to run it that has their own opinion on how it should be ran and what should be said. So it's kind of impossible. But when you have like billionaires own news, you could just change what people think. And, because if you like Google like Jeff Bezos, he could just only put out positive shit about himself. <laughs> and, then, and then people are like, oh, okay. I mean, he wanted it so badly, he immediately agreed to the first price the owners gave him. 250 million. Or there's like the conspiracies that like some famous people pay for good PR or something like that. I, I don't know how true I think that is. I, I don't think it's true for like the majority of people. I think like really rich people can pay for good PR like him. But, like, the average actor I don't think is going to pay for, like, good PR. And I'm sure you'll never see a bad article about good old Jeff in that newspaper anymore. Because now he has the power to attack anyone he wants with articles. But if you think $250 million is expensive, just wait until you hear how much his mansions cost. Cause oh, see, like, owning a house like that, chat, would be so fucking sick. I feel like it wouldn't feel like a home, though. Like, it would be cool to live here for, like, a week. But then after that, I'm going to be like, this isn't, this isn't home, right? This is, and it's also too big. Cut it, cut it like this. Cut it right down the middle and I'd be happy with that. I don't understand what's the point of like 10 fucking 15 bedroom houses. He's going to have more than just a couple mansions. Dude has seven. I wouldn't want a maid. He probably has maids and shit. Yeah, but that would bother me. I wouldn't want like a live-in maid. Somebody to live with you and like clean your shit. That would bother me. Or even like an attendant. I would love to have, like, a private chef to, like, cook me dinner, but I wouldn't want to wake up in the morning and be like, what's up, John? And he's like, what are we having today, Jeff? You want some French toast? I'd be like, dude, I don't, I'm not even related to you and you live in my house. I'd be like, can you go somewhere else? Like, fucking please. Like, that would bother me. Are pretty weird. Like his DC home, which actually used to be a museum before he bought it. Wow. He really wiped away all that history just for the place to be empty most of the time. So instead of old relics, it's now got a movie theater with- Oh, shit! The one thing I want. The one thing I want in life. And I've said this since I was a child, dude. A wee lad. I would love to have, oh my god, like the fucking- And, and have like a little popcorn stand. And like a little, like a fake concession stand. Like it's a movie theater. Movie theater, whiskey taste, but without like the annoying ass people and like randos that have to sit next to you, that always bothers me. Tasting room, elevators, a ballroom, 11 bedrooms, and 25 bathrooms, costing him 36 million in total. Who even needs that many rooms? And that's just one mansion. He's got another in Miami worth 68 million. This waterfront mansion's wow. got seven bedrooms, 14 bathrooms, a full on sauna, and a giant pizza oven in the wall. He Ooh, that's sick. The place so much that he wanted a second one. So he kicked out his neighbor and bought the place for 79 million. His next property, though, is worth 80 mil, but it's not even a mansion, it's an apartment. He bought a four floor New York City penthouse. It's got your standard marble floors, library, and a glass fireplace. Okay, I don't want an apocalypse to happen, but have you ever wondered what, you, what your neighbor's houses look like on the inside? Or just like a house that you pass sometimes and you're like, damn, I wonder what the fucking inside of that house looks like. I'm just saying, if an apocalypse happened, I'd be able to bang fucking. Oh, they have a nice floor pan. Oh, wow. Open concept too. Wow, that's nice. This is really what I thought it would be. But it's one of the only buildings with the perfect view of the Empire State. But his last mansion's got to be my favorite. Because not only is it in Hawaii where the weather is perfect, it's also got some of the craziest views I've ever seen. First off, you got your own private beach. But to the right of that, there's a whole ass lava field from a 1000 year old volcanic eruption. And there isn't just one mansion on this property. There's actually three. So it makes sense why- Yo, should we do 
a Zillow video one day where I just review like the coolest, the coolest and the weirdest homes. And you guys could like suggest uh, some. I feel like I could do that one day. Spent 78 million, but the local Hawaiians are getting more pissed by the day because Bezos isn't the first billionaire to buy a ton of land on these small islands. And if they ever decide to invade his property, he's basically got a military base in his backyard. So I'm sure he'll be fine. You really think Jeff Bezos would care? He could buy anything he wants. I mean, he even has the record in California. Yo, this guy's the biggest Jeff Bezos dick rider, dude. Oh my God. You really think Jeff Bezos is going to care about that? He could buy anything he wants. The most expensive home ever bought. It's still being constructed in Beverly Hills. But just to buy the land and knock down the old house, it costs this man $165 million. Dude, it's like not even, you don't even have a home. If you have more than three houses, you don't own a home. You live in Airbnbs, dude. What the fuck? Nothing's gonna feel homey. I could see somebody having like, like when it's like uh, snowbirds or whatever, and they have like uh, old people live in Florida, and then they have like a northern house and shit, like people in Boston and fucking New York and shit. I understand that, right? You have two homes, maybe three. If you have like seven houses, you're just fucking living in a in like a hotel room. I, 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 at that point. Making his entire portfolio of mansions. I feel like you'd forget, like, oh, this room exists. At least 500 mil, because there's still hidden properties no one even knows about, but that's still nothing. Oh, see, like, that's so sick. Oh, that's so sick. Fuck! Where is this? Like, I would love to live here. Like, that's my, I want to get, I want to have enough money where I can fucking buy, I'll buy the shittiest house in this fucking neighborhood. Well, nothing compared to Jeff Bezos spending four billion on his balls. And he saved them just for his favorite employees. Uh, Jeff, not those balls. Bezos Balls is the nickname for Jeff's special Amazon offices. And this place is basically a giant greenhouse with glass walls on the outside and over 40,000 exotic plants on the inside. I mean, the largest tree in his balls is over 50 feet tall. You can visit this private jungle too if you buy tickets. And you'll see Amazon employees working away. Oh, I gotta in the pay him? I gotta fucking pay him. I gotta pay the Amazon man to go see his fucking nuts. Okay. I gotta go see, oh, wow, glass balls, wow, leaves. Uh, in the middle of a city? Wow, fascinating, a tree. Now, this brings a whole new meaning to sweatshops. And even though Bezos loves his balls, I'm sure he enjoys his yacht even more. Because it's one of the most expensive private boats in the world. And it's not just any yacht. It's a sailboat, meaning this thing can move without an engine. Which is pretty crazy, considering- See, that's sick. See, that's sick, chat. This boat is over 400 And you know damn well he hits a button and it goes- And then a turret with fucking missiles just comes out and he's sitting there in a mech suit. Just shooting down fucking planes and shit. Somebody attacks him. Aside from being the biggest sailboat in the world, this yacht comes with some unbelievable stuff. It's got his own $10 million helicopter that surprisingly Bezos' wife can fly herself. But it's also got jacuzzis, a nightclub. Helicopters scare me. I don't know if I would ever want to go in a helicopter. A garage for supercars, and you guessed it, a submarine. Hopefully that sub is built better than others. And to make it even more unique, the entire yacht can be manned by one person. Most yachts need a whole crew. This freak of a boat costs 25 million a year to maintain and set Bezos back 500 million to buy the damn thing. But the most expensive thing he owns is a piece of paper. Cause in 2019, Jeff's wife caught him cheating with his mistress and rightfully she was pissed. But for some dumbass reason, Jeff was doing all of that without signing a prenup. And just like Kanye- Oh my God. Uh, I need to say this. I feel like people don't know. I don't know what prenups are very well, but prenups are way more complicated than you think they are. Everybody always thinks, oh, if you sign a prenup, that means if you ever get divorced, you just keep your money. No. If you sign a prenup, you can usually protect the assets that you've accumulated pre-marriage. But the second you're married and your wife or husband steps in the same house as you, both of your assets are the same legally. Like, what is yours is now theirs, right? And what is theirs is now yours, right? It's, you're one and the same. So you, that's why the majority of marriages end with people splitting shit, because even if you have a prenup, it's hard to determine what assets was owned pre-marriage and post-marriage and shit. There are different prenups. And with Jeff Bezos, he might be able to have a prenup that fucking determines everything that he's ever fucking accumulated. But you can protect future assets like real estates, bank accounts, artwork, and crypto. 
But it's just like, I mean, he could sign one. It says there are future asset prenups, but I feel like that's not the majority of the prenups that people sign. The majority of the prenups that I've heard of people using are the ones where it's like pre, pre asset or pre marriage prenups. But if you're sitting there and getting married and you sign 55 fucking prenups before you get married with like detailed documents on how everything is theirs, why not just date? Like I could see myself being like, okay, I'd want a pre -mar a marriage prenup for like my assets before marriage. But if you're like, I'm going to detail that everything I've ever owned will and will always be mine. You are literally defeating the purpose of marriage. Honestly, his ex-wife had the best investment of all time because she married him when his net worth was at its lowest and divorced him at its peak, securing her a total bag of $38 billion. But I don't think she married him for the money. I think it was she cheated. He cheated on her and she was like, OK, we're done. And I'm going to take I'm going to take some of that bread. Like, I understand that, right? Like, I get that. All right. Scariest things found in Halloween candles.